So today I'm going to make a little video. Now you're not going to see many videos like this anymore. What we're going to do here, this is a DDR Japanese cabinet, one of the original 573 based cabinets here. And check it out, it has memory cards. And you can see there, they use PlayStation 1 memory cards. If you want to learn all about those and how they work, I'll link the video in the description below. But today, we have a cabinet here, which is kind of on its way out. It's missing a lot of stuff. But we want to move these memory cards over, and also the inbuilt module. So we're going to look at how that works and how that ties together. And we're going to transplant them into a different Japanese cabinet in the living room. And, we, you know, I'm just going to walk you along the journey. And if you have a Korean cabinet, like this one here, there's no reason it wouldn't work. It's kind of the same measurements and everything. Again, it still has the 573 inside, so the procedure will be the same. But we're going to put it on the one in the living room, which is a J-cab. Let's uh, check it out. So this is the one we're going to be moving it to here. As you can see, it's a Japanese cabinet. A couple telltale signs of that. I'll tell you in a minute. So we're going to replace this front hole bezel here because we can't really cut a hole for the memory card slot. So it'll be easier just to transplant this whole section. And again, there will be a little control board as well. A Japanese cabinet, typically they have a little white panel up there as well. And all the boards here are vertical. So you can see how the boards are all vertical in here. They're all going from top to bottom. There's the 573 and the amp, for example. And in the back of the Korean cabinet here, the K-cab, you can see they're horizontal. There's a telltale sign there. Korean cabs, yeah, maybe they're not made as well, but they're actually far easier to work on. You're not worrying about vertical CDs and things like that. There's more room. They're actually great cabinets. But yeah, so let's get on with it anyway and take out the memory card unit. So first thing to get this bezel off here, we're going to take out six screws. So this one, this one. In the middle, same below, and two on the other side there. So with the screws removed, we're just going to slowly pry on this and pull it out away from us. What you'd need to do is just pop it out from under here, lift it up, and then pull it out. So inside here, um, there's actually the front kind of ports here where you put your memory cards in. Then there's actually a memory card module here. It's this whole big silver box. And ultimately that plugs into the 573, which we'll see shortly. So it's uh, kind of looking at all this stuff right here. So how people get disappointed when purchasing these on eBay, they'll think they only need this section right here with the ports. However, when they plug it into their machine, they'll actually need the whole kind of module as well, which kind of interfaces the 573 with the slots. And it's kind of the brains behind the operation. If you don't have this module, then don't buy these card units. You'd need both items for the cards to work. Okay, so it's out. There's pretty much two Molex connectors that need unplugging, ultimately. Uh, there's one right here. This is a uh, an 8-pin one here. You can see right there. And that ultimately goes into the jammer, I believe. And then also a 12-pin uh, 12, 12 Molex right there. Uh, everything else is pretty much connected to itself, so these are the only ones we're going to care about. And we're just going to pretty much plug and play these. <laughs> They're quite easy to find. So we're going to do the same again. Uh, all six bolts on the front and pull out the old panel. So the non-memory card slot one, you can see it's a lot simpler here. We just have the buttons and a little ground cable. Not much going on. And the buttons ultimately connect to that 12-pin connector there. So we're just going to unplug that. So now we're ready for the install here. You can see uh, where our 12-pin one's going to go right there. So that's no problem. The other one, we're going to feed this through all the way to the back of the machine towards the 573. Then we're going to hook it up last. So what we're going to do, we're going to plug this in first, where the other one came out. Push the whole panel in, thread that through, and we should be done. So there's one uh, secret ingredient we forgot to mention. Now this is uh, a USB cable. Well, it looks like a USB cable. It says it's a USB cable. But it supports JVS. Now JVS, what is that? Who cares? But we need it. So this end, the type B end, the square end, goes into the back of the memory card PCB. There's a little USB port. Right there. Quite hard to see actually. That one right there. So it's going to go in there. And then the other end is going to go into the 573. So out with the old. 
in with the new. I've put in a couple bolts just to keep it steady while we go around the back now. So we're going to deal with this last connector here. Uh, it looks a little different. The point is it actually taps into an existing Molex connection so you can actually upgrade the memory cards. It's quite simple really. There's only one Molex that kind of matches this. It's just the case of finding it. And on here, on top of the 573, it's right here. So we're just going to unhook this one here. So now our existing one is unhooked, we're pretty much just going to plug and play. So in the male end here, we're going to put in our female connector. And in the female connector there, we're going to put in the male one. So we're pretty much just slipping this into the system. Okay, so we're all plugged in there. We're now getting power to the uh, memory card unit. So it can actually, you know, power itself on. That's quite important. And that comes from the uh, loom there. So we're just going to pull the other end of that USB cable into the JVS socket of the 573 which is right next to the dip switches, that kind of little black one there, it's hard to see. Uh, now the cable is a USB cable, it says USB on it, however this port is a JVS port so if you plug your phone into it, well the voltages I believe are different and it can actually fry some of your stuff. So this port here, JVS, even though it looks exactly like USB. Weird things you learn, isn't it? So, here goes nothing. The moment of truth. Dance, dance, ah, revolution! It looks like it works. We have the power. So that's the 5 volt Molex, the 6 pin, powering it up, which is a good sign. Uh, the 12 pin Molex, I believe that was for these buttons, which seems to work too. Dance, dance, revolution! And lastly, the USB cable that goes into the JVS port enables this part here, which I believe is Japanese for memory cards work or, or something like that. So now we can go in the service in here and look at memory card options and see what new things are available for us. So now it says on here, before it was off, so we can kind of look in there. So now because that USB cable is connected, before this was empty, and now it says version 1, white IO PCB, so it's actually detecting the PCB. The 5.7s we can talk to the memory card PCB, and we're all good. And this is the, the super disk as well, which seems to be tested and supported with memory cards, which is quite good. So. It looks like we are good to go, which is pretty cool. So, moment of truth, let's go. Memory card in. So now the light's gone off, which indicates it's reading it. We can see at the top here it has the memory card icon, which is a good sign. Good sign. And uh, yeah, I guess we'd have to test it from here. So here we go, here's an edit on the memory cards uh, right here. Can't start falling in love speed mix. We got our icon, right, right. We can play uh, Aaron in Japan's Chin Chin edit. And I think, I think we might be good to go. There's the edit name. I'll pull out the memory card.